Hey guys, what's up? My name is Julia, and I'm going to be doing my Pokemon Leaf Green playthrough series. Um, this is my first playthrough series, and I'm kind of really excited about this one. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it after we get past the whole intro naming your character thing. So, just be patient, and I'll get back to you soon. Don't you guys love in Gen 3 when they actually gave you directions on what each button does? Like... I mean, I can understand if you were a little kid. And, like, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Fire Red, or Leaf Green was your very first Pokemon game. But for the older kids, we all looked at it like, what the fuck is this? Like, no, we didn't need explanations. Okay, the intro paragraph. In the world in which you are about to enter, you will embark on a grand adventure with you as the hero. Speak to people and check things wherever you go, be it towns, roads, or caves. Gather information and hints from every source. New paths will open and you will to you by helping people in need, overcoming challenges, and solving mysteries. At times, <laughs> mysteries is right. At times, you will be challenged by others and attacked by wild creatures. Be brave and keep pushing on. Yeah. Through your adventure, we hope that you will interact with all sorts of people and achieve personal growth. That is our biggest objective. Press the A button and let's begin your adventure. Ha, <laughs> good old Professor Oak. Glad to meet you. Welcome to the world of Pokemon. My name is Oak, and people affectionately refer to me as the Pokemon Professor. And this world is inhabited far and wide by creatures called Pokemon. For some people, Pokemon are pets. Others use them for battling. As for myself, I study Pokemon as a profession. But first, tell me a little about yourself. I am a girl, thank you. Um... Hmm. Just gonna do it generically and do the default one. Because why the hell not? Yes. gonna name him green just because a very own Pokemon legend is about to unfold the world of dreams and adventures and Pokemon awaits okay um I know you noticed like some of my side remarks when I was reading that whole intro paragraph thing. Um, that's basically because the whole point of this particular leaf green version, I mean, so far it looks normal. Yeah. Um, bye, Mom. Is basically because from the video that I saw where I got this download, it's basically supposed to be a Pokemon creepypasta hack. I mean, so far I'm not seeing anything different, but... Needless to say, that won't change. Um, for those who don't know what a creepypasta is, it's basically a... Um, it's basically a fanfiction of the horror, thriller, or suspense variety. My favorites have always been the ones based on stuff that I grew up with, like TV cartoons of the 90s, video games, etc. Like, I've read... The first one I ever read that got me really interested in creepypastas was the Rugrats theory, where basically, like... All the long story short, all the babies are imaginary, and Angelica's mentally batshit crazy. Um, and then I kind of elaborated more, watching things on YouTube when I discovered the Lavender Town Syndrome, and that's probably the most popular and most well-known creepypasta out there for a Pokemon. And what basically that is is um, when the beta version of Pokemon Green was released in Japan and all the kids were testing it, they were discovering seizures and suicides and everything else just because of the frequencies in the Lavender Town Syndrome. These frequencies are supposed to be only be able to be able, 
These frequencies are supposedly only heard by kids since their ears aren't fully developed, which caused them to go crazy, and adults can't hear, can't hear them. Um, I mean, obviously it's just a rumor, but, like, there's tons of remakes of the Lavender Town theme and stuff on YouTube, and some of them are pretty creepy. Um... I was born with a hearing disability, and some of them even, like, really hurt my ears. I don't know what people did to them. Um. So, yeah, that was pretty bad. <laughs> um. This one, and uh, what all Pokemon creepypastas end up doing is, especially for the hack game ones, it, they are based off of red and blue. Um. They all start off normal until you reach the Forsaken Lavender Town, because you know that's the creepiest place in all of the games. I mean, even the regular 8-bit normal theme song that we're all used to hearing is to be pretty creepy if you really take the time to listen to it. Maybe not so much creepy as it is, like, really eerie, but you get the point. Um, I love how they have to explain to you, like, what a Pokemon battle is, too. Um... But anyway, this game, from what I saw in the video, is supposed to be a mashup of four Pokemon Creepypastas. Um, you got, I think, the Lavender Town Syndrome's in there, um, with the Lavender Town theme. Then you have, from what I saw, Pokemon Creepy Black, and I've spent, and I've read, like, every Pokemon Creepypasta you could possibly think of, and I've played so many different ROM hacks that fans have made based off the stories. I've played Lost Silver. Which is probably one of my favorites. I played so many different versions of that. Um, but, and I played the Creepy Black that's out there. But the only difference between the story Creepy Black and the ROM hack was that the ROM hack was based off of... The ROM hack was based off of um, Pokemon Fire Red. And the, origin and the story was based off of a regular Pokemon Red cartridge. Um... And whenever I went to go play Pokemon Black, the only- I compared it. Like, I want to play them for comparison to see how accurate they are to the stories. And when I did that, it was, like, not cool. Like, it, in this story, as soon as- well, how it starts off is, for those that don't know the story, is whenever you get your starter Pokemon from Professor Oak, you're automatically, without him even knowing, you automatically get the Lavender Town Ghost, the Mar Ghost of Marowak. And you're able to use that thing in battle. Um, it only, it has the move. The only move it has is Curse. And what that does is instead of the whole, for what it does for ghost types, is, you know, like, restore your health to put a curse on the opposing Pokemon so they still lose health as the battle goes on. Well, in this case, if you use Curse, the other Pokemon automatically faints. Um, but in the story, if you use Curse in a Pokemon, that Pokemon dies. Not just faints, like, oh, like, we joke all the time, like, okay, I can't use him anymore because he's dead. No, like, dies is in... His body's now in a grave in the Pokemon. Tower dies. Um, in the black version that I found that I actually played, did not do that at all. It still said fainted. And whenever you battle trainers in the story, the trainer was supposed to... If you use Curse, Curse was not only supposed to affect their Pokemon, but the trainer as well, and kill them. Like, their sprite at the end of the battle was supposed to become a tombstone. And it didn't. And the whole entire time, like, whether you were in a town or whatever, the Lavender Town theme was supposed to play constantly, non-stop. It was just- the game itself was really lame and nothing at all like the story besides the whole ghost thing. I was like, it was really dull. I mean, like, I'm a huge fan of the whole black and white graphics. Um, I'm a huge fan of the whole black and white graphics, 8-bit music, and especially for creepy creepypastas, I just think it kind of gives you, like, I don't know. To me, it's creepier, but everybody's different. Um, and so with that, I just didn't care for it. So when I saw this, and I saw, because I've been trying to find forever a hack where you can battle the Buried Alive bottle. And the Buried Alive model was supposed to be this thing in Pokemon Leaf Green, or I'm sorry, Pokemon Green version. Um, that if you go to the 
top of the topmost portion of the lavender tower. Like, I I think there was supposed to be even a floor above where Fuji was, or even after, like, you save Fuji. Um. Even after you save Fuji, you were supposed to be able to go to the base where you fight the lavender ghost, and you were to encounter a thing called a white hand. Um. And with that, basically, it was like this old, decrepit hand that knew two moves, fist and brutal. And according to this, like, what threw the story off right off the bat to prove that it wasn't real is that it was supposed to be a type of file that wasn't even recognized in the Game Boy. Like, I think it was... I forget what it was. But, um... Obviously, it couldn't happen. Well, after you, after you could either, you could either catch it and use it, or whatever else. Um, but it only knew two attacks: fist and brutal. And then these animations were animations that aren't even like possible in the Game Boy. Um, and then when you went upstairs, you encountered this decrepit corpse coming out of the ground, called Barry Man or Buried Alive. Um, and weird text happens and you battle him, and what happened in the story was the player wasn't supposed to be able to beat him, and if it beats him, the game freezes. Like, it just freezes, and you have to start over from your save point. Um, because it was intended for that thing to be so strong that you automatically lose. Because when you're in Lavender Town, you don't have any badges yet. You're nowhere near level 100. So, um, and after you do that, and after you do lose, a little picture comes up that says, game over. And it's this really disturbing picture of the corpse thing physically eating you. This corpse thing has four Pokemon, a Gengar, a Muck, and two white hands. Um, that's basically about it. Um, when I watched the video for this particular game... Oh, and Hypno's Lullaby is another one. Um, that's supposed to be in this. Hypno's Lullaby was basically, was that story involving Hypno taking children away for all of eternity. Um, I've played the Hypno's Lullaby hack. And I probably will do a walkthrough of that one. Oops. Um, and I probably will do a walkthrough of that one. Um, and it was a, it was actually pretty good. Like, it, there wasn't really jump scares in there, but I did jump a few times. Um, the only really, the only thing I really didn't care for about that is that while it did stick to this hit news all about a story and the song really, really well. Which I'll put a link somewhere in here. Um, it, it played with its storyline really, really well, except for you would think that, oh, you're the hero and everything else, and you turn out, it, you don't. You basically, I mean, unless I did something wrong the first time, I, one and only time I've played it, but you, I don't think you were supposed to, like, you're not supposed to, to you get, like, trapped in your own nightmare, basically. Um, which, if you think about it, it's pretty creepy on in the town. Um, oh, I'm in bubble already, yeah. But, um, whenever I watch the video for this particular game, it's supposed to be played like every creepypasta Pokemon story on the internet. All fun and games, all normal, etc. Until you get to Lavender Town. Like, I don't know if that's necessarily true. For all I know, it could be a hoax. I don't know. Um. I mean, I did, like, a crash course of this before I played it. Like, not the whole game. Just, I wanted to just at least make it to Lavender Town. And the Lavender Town... Like, once you exited the Rock Tunnel to get to Lavender Town, like, it wasn't just a straight shot down, like, the normal Lavender Town map. It was this, like, little cave you had to walk through. I didn't go through the cave specific, the cave itself, because I was just kind of like, oh, okay, this is getting, so far it's sticking true to it, and I wanted to do this series and not, 
um, ruin it for me. I kind of wanted to just do it all myself. And truth be told, I was a little bit terrified to continue since I was like, oh my god, maybe this isn't a hoax. And it's like the whole battle thing. It's a lot different when you're playing it as opposed to reading it. Like, I've read, I've read these Pokemon pastas a hundred times over. But whenever you're physically playing it and you're, like, right there in the mood, it's like, holy shit. Um, like, the hack game Escape from Lavender Town freaked me the hell out, and I've... And I've, um, watched walkthroughs of that. I cannot tell you how many times. I don't know what Oh, the green looks pretty. So, I kind of didn't go through there. Um, but, oh, there's the old guy that didn't have his coffee yet. Um, so, yeah, it freaked me out, I'm not going to lie. So I really was kind of too chicken to go through. Um, I mean... There's really not much else to it, like, so far, what I'm seeing right now is that it's pretty normal. Um, I don't see any differences, but like I said, once I reach the Avatar Town, it's, it's like every Poke Pasta. Um, and unlike all the other ones I played to, instead of finding a million ones, this one's supposed to be a mashup of four of the popular ones, Lavender Town Syndrome, Hypno Zullaby, Buried Alive, and Pokemon Creepy Black. Um, now, when I did a crash course of this, I obviously didn't get the ghost in the beginning. I don't know if that was the person that created this um, intention. But I... I mean, it didn't bother me. Like, if I can get it, if I get it, I get it. I just don't know when I get it. Um, I really didn't pay much attention to the video that I watched either. I just kind of skimmed through to see if, like, the Buried Alive model was in there. Because that's the one that I was really excited for. I've played so many, but I've never battled the Buried Alive model. Um, what I did find out, though, too, is I attempted to go through. And I find out that the... Once it gets weird, it turns into, like, the text boxes and stuff turn into Spanish. I guess the person that did this is speaks Spanish. Um, but this is, but it's by far probably the most accurate one I've found. Um, so I will have, like, annotations and stuff up with the text boxes of what it actually says. Because I don't speak Spanish. I'm going to have some, one of my friends translate it for me. But, I mean, so far, it's relatively the same. I mean, I wish I had the ghost, that way I could breeze through this game in like two seconds, but in a way that kind of ruined the fun. Did this for the whole suspense building thing, I guess. It shouldn't have taken that long to kill that freaking Pidgey. It should have been out. And I'm like four levels higher than it. Oh shit, I forgot. 
I forgot to get the town map. Kinda want that. Yeah. Maybe it is hacked. The town map is floating like way above your head. Alrighty then. She just pulls down out of thin air. Maybe Gary's sister is a witch. What I tend to do a lot too is kind of like hold down the space bar during battles because, I don't know, it's faster and it's like really boring. But... You know, probably gonna try not to do it too, too often because it like distorts the sound. But it's kind of a force of habit for me. <laughs> Did anybody ever actually use the Tishi TV? purposefully made the wild Pokemon a little bit harder. I never noticed that. I think I'm actually going to end part one after I get through the Viridian Forest. Another thing that made this different than Pokemon Black 2 is, um, I'm sorry, the Creepy Black, is that this entire game, it's supposed to be thundering and storming and so bad during this entire game, um, but I'm not gonna, I might as well. 
But in the creepy black story, this trainer, right here, the one I'm battling, is supposed to be the first one that the, that in the creepy black story, was the first one to physically die, like turn into a tombstone, and it doesn't happen in the game. And it just doesn't, which is kind of sad. your ass and all I got was $72. That's kind of sad. You think they'd be smart enough to do like a spray animation? Instead, it was like it ate it. <laughs> it's like Squirtle ate the antidote bottle. Okay, one final trainer battle, and then that will, then I'll be out of the Viridian Forest, I'll enter Pewter City, and then that's where I will end it for today, and pick up later in Pewter City, and then part two will be Pewter City and tackling Mount, oops. And tackling Mount Moon.
Okay, and that concludes part one. I'll see you guys next time for part two.